Hey, Foot Clan, I hope you enjoyed that Super Bowl. But that Super Bowl means 2020 is done. It's in the books. Thank goodness. That football season is gone. We're on to 2021. I don't even remember it. I don't either. But this year, the UDK, it, look, the pre-sale, it's already going on. Are you going to get the Ultimate Draft Kit? You can get it for the lowest possible price. And this year, the UDK Plus, the new and improved Mega Pack, it's sweeping the nation. All the kids are talking about it. Do you have rookie fever? Well, in the UDK Plus is our brand spanking new Dynasty Pass, and you can get in that thing right now. Now, the content is available right now. Go check it out, ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast back with you, Andy, Mike, and Jason. Thursday, February 11th for real. <laughs> the real February 11th this yeah, time? Yeah, this ain't no. February 9th masquerading is a February 11th. No, this is the real one. That's sneaky snook. It almost got away <laughs> with it, too. Uh, welcome into the show. Excited to be with you. You can find us on Twitter at the FFBallers, YouTube.com slash the Fantasy Footballers. Make sure you subscribe. Click the bell. And uh, that'll let you know when we're going live for special events or have special things going on. Well worth it. It's just a click. Oh, it's just a click. Yeah. I mean, just a, if you add up all of the clicks that you have to do to navigate through the internet to get to youtube.com slash fantasy footballers or the fantasy footballers. I don't even know the URL. It's very, you're saying it's, it's not. It's oh. not much time at all. Just no, it's not bad. Clickety click. How many click. wasted clicks have you had elsewhere on the internet? And this oh, is one man. that's worthwhile. I can't. I I don't even know. Yeah, yeah. Carpal uh, tunnel. We have buy or sell on the show today. That's a mailbag. Going to be answering some questions. Want to kick things off here at the top? Oh yeah. Want to say congratulations? Oh, oh yeah. We got to. Yeah. We got to get this. Yes. Congrats to our very own, our uh, content manager, editor in chief extraordinaire, excellent writer Kyle. We call him Kyle the Borgogan, Kyle Borgognoni. Uh, he is the winner of SF uh, of the FSWA's Fantasy Football Article of the Year, which That's was right. just announced. You're darn we, right he is. That's right. We did it. That's right. We had the best article of the year. <laughs> Jason, are you taking credit for you, Kyle's you, article? You're darn right I am. <laughs> I mean, well, it, it was uh, a team effort. This was a complete <laughs> fantasy footballer's article. So, yeah, we've got to take full credit for Kyle's work. I think he would want that. <laughs> congrats to jason thank you and kyle and jason and kyle for their uh their article the fantasy football uh article you can find it on the website uh the evolution of language in 2020 and it's uh, a great read congrats congrats to kyle yes, for the kyle, recognition a lot of a lot of time thought effort went into that article and uh, i know that a lot of people have really benefited from it and heart and heart mm-hmm and earth and wind and fire. <laughs> uh, anything else going on at the top here you guys want to talk about? Mm, nope. We got some rookie profiles up on the website as well. So if you are hungry, thirsty. It's time. It's dynasty it is, time. It's rookie time. And I can say the, uh, the dynasty pass in the UDK Plus has been really well received. We are going to continue to add to it. If you don't really know what it is, there is a lot of rookie content in there, team opportunities, uh, where we go through and individually grade every single team at every single position for possible uh, good, de basically good destinations for mm -hmm. rookies to land at in. Mm -hmm. No, you land, land it. Yeah. All, and free agents, too. Uh, and we have our Dynasty startups. We have the rookie rankings. And there will be three major releases of the Dynasty Pass this off season. So the first one is up and available. Mm -hmm. There'll be one kind of post workout and then there'll be one post draft. And so you're going to have a, a complete picture of the dynasty landscape. And I know more and more people are into dynasty leagues. And so we're going to help you out. Let's do some buy, sell. 
Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right, buy or sell, Joe Mixon. Will he top 1,400 total yards in 2021? Joe Mixon in 14 games in 2017 got to 913. 2018 got to 1424. 2019 got to 1426. And then he only played six games this past year. In fact, I think Joe Mixon was almost one of the more forgotten uh, players. Six games played, but his 16-game pace was... 1,509 yards and would have been the RB5. Yeah, Ooh. he had a great stretch right before the injury. If you remember how – you're right. Mixon is a very forgettable character from this previous season, and the reason why is because it was a, an awfully delicious sandwich with terrible bread. You had the start of the season where he had three games in a row. You drafted him. You wanted him to be the guy, and he didn't finish in the top 25 running backs mm -hmm. in week one, two, or three. It was like, oh, no, what have I done? And then you got the the Joe Mix, the, the great experience. He was the running back one the next week, 23-8 the next week, and then he got injured. So he had I am struggling with your sandwich metaphor here, Jason. Sure. Is there a well, top this, piece of this bread? Is, this is an open face sandwich. Well, no, because the injury uh, is the back of the sandwich. You had a, a, a crap oh, start, and okay. then he got injured. Oh, the, bread, the bread's bad. The inside's good. That's exactly oh. what I'm saying. And and So, so stale bottom, delicious uh, fillings. Pastrami in the oh, middle. Oh, yeah. Pastrami, it's a good pastrami, pastrami for sure. mustard, and a little bit of Thousand Island. But then the top bread is just pure mold it's not even bread anymore that's right it's gone bad okay, okay. so maybe you turn it open face because you want to get rid of this piece of bread <laughs> for safety reasons that is what we what we do with stats but now imagine that the following year you are like i'm gonna have that sandwich again i don't think you're gonna want it you took a bite of a moldy sandwich that's right you're gonna say not today <laughs> and so I, I think um people will undervalue joe mixon who is currently still not 25 years old he will be 25 this season but he's a young man. I believe in this offense. I believe in Joe Burrow. And I I, I think the depth chart dictates that he will be a 1,400 combined yardage back in 2021. With an ADP lower than this past year? 100% yes, has to be lower than it was this, this season. Now, there is some optimism about Joe Burrow potentially getting back in time for the start of the season. Yeah, um, if I'm it's not, not putting the, my bet there. I'm not going to put my bet there, but it would matter to me a little bit about how I look at Joe Mixon starting the year. I think I will buy 1,400 total yards. I think he will be forgotten a little bit. Um, didn't really help your team. I mean, an injury knocking him out of the whole year, and he, he had the Christian McCaffrey situation where it was like when he first got hurt, you said, well, he's probably going to come back. Yeah. Well, I, 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 probably this week, but yeah, he never did. They, the, the Bengals did string that one along by never placing him on IR, unfortunately. The the nice thing, though, is look at his percentage of work. Joe Mixon was a workhorse. Now, those first three games, I mean, you're si he's still pulling in almost all of the running back attempts, 95%, 94 all of them those first three weeks. However, his target share was very low in those first three weeks, which has been – a, been a problem with with Joe Mixon. So those first three games, it was ah crap. Here we go again. Joe Mixon is a great pass catching running back, but they're not throwing him the ball at all. But then those next three games, I, he he had a target share. Uh, the, the next two healthy games, a seventeen percent target share and a twenty eight percent target share. That like for the team, that's not just the running back target share. So that is a very uh, good sign of life. That as Joe Burrow was getting more acclimated, we saw him starting to look at Joe Mixon. So there is, there is reason for optimism, but the, the the dude's body just doesn't like football. He he gets nicked up. Yeah, like that's been the biggest problem so far with Joe Mixon has been injuries. He's only had one season completing 16 games. That was uh in 2019. Yeah, I feel like with both Joe Mixon and Josh Jacobs, both players that I was really bullish sure. on, I got to deal with injuries and mm -hmm. then I got to deal with unexpected or unfulfilled pass catching promise for both players and it feels a little bit like you know jd mckissick and antonio gibson in in uh you washington, know for the washington yeah. football team where yes you can throw to mckissick but when you throw to gibson he can do more with it but they mm -hmm. just don't do it because they specialize that was what mm -hmm. happened with geo for many years once they started getting the ball to joe mixon he was putting up big numbers they're like well mixon we can't throw you the ball because this is all that giovanni bernard does right like, but i 
but I'm really good at it. Yeah, but it's all he does. If we don't throw it to him, what else <laughs> are we going to do with him? I'm telling you that he's ha- just there now. Now he's just on the bench. Enough coaches get Being fired a to where that's really true, and it's true on the goal line for certain teams where they're like, "Well, that's just what he does." Bring in the heavy back. <laughs> and look, people are losing their jobs with this philosophy. Demarco Murray should have been sat down for a Derrick Henry explosion years before, but it's no. Oh, we could. We're kind of. We got our depth chart filled out yeah. in ink over there. Like, we're not going to change that thing. What else am I supposed to do with DeMarco? <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to do. Uh, did you buy or sell? Oh, I have done neither. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I got the impression you might sell it uh, no, with I'm, the injury. It, the injury is a concern, but I am i don't want to be a man who's betting on injury, so I will buy it because I, I feel like if he plays – the majority of the season of 14-plus games, then he will hit that mark. This is important for you to know out there when you think about running backs. We, All three of us bought 1,400 total yards. Out of the last five years, 40 of the 41 running backs with that total ended up a top 12 running back. But, but the one who didn't? <laughs> yeah, the one who didn't is Joe Mixon. It was Joe Mixon uh, in 2019, Joe. which is one of the reasons why it was kind of his year, right? He was on RB5 pace. At the time of the injury, it was like, okay, he just didn't score enough, and that'll get fixed, but no, it didn't. All right, that was Buy or Sell brought to you by our wonderful friends at Pristine Auction. They have hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions. You can check them out right now. They got pop culture auctions. They got different sports. Yeah, but do they have Taylor Heineke stuff? I do not know, Mike. I know he got paid. He did. So he may be like buying up some of his gear and then distributing it to auctions to get some hype up. But, Just slap uh, some mustache on. I got some hot gear for you. Got some signed it's Taylor, autographed. Taylor Heineke. I saw him sign it. Check it out. PristineAuction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Uh, that was one of the bits of news that uh, took place. Patrick Mahomes also going to undergo surgery to repair a torn plantar plate. Yeah, so the whole issue what? of his you know, foot was fine, wasn't an issue. Um, okay, but he did have surgery on it, so it was it, – it was, not nothing. It was precautionary. Yeah, no, I'm, but another no. precautionary surgery. No, he was dealing with it and uh, ran for his life at the, uh, at the Super well, Bowl. Well, that's what he was saying. He said, my, hurt, my foot hurts a lot more when I have to run <laughs> at Constantly. all times when I have the ball. All right, you guys ready to do some mailbag? Let's go. Mailbag. Mailbag. All right. Al Borland, how are you doing today? You're on the microphone? I am. Doing well. We should have a chat. What's new? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Nothing. Uh, We don't have Judge Giamatti in studio today, so you're back there. Do you sit in his seat when that happens? No, I'm still in my seat. Really? So there's just an absence Uh, to your right? Yes. I'll be rubbing my butt all over that seat. Mm -hmm. Take this, rich man. There ain't no pants on this seat. (laughs) Now, he's in Barbados, right? Is that the... Yeah, he's... He's just going around the world. What do you pay? All these different names for like uh, famous uh, vacation destinations. Mm. Do, they're all the same in your head, right? Like yes, Key Largo. Yeah, I don't know. Barbados. Maybe like, why don't we go the, the Kokomos? Yeah, <laughs> all right. They're all the same. Yeah, pretty soon it'll be Brooks. Brooks is, Bados. <laughs> say Brooks is actually at a location that us common folk don't even know about really yes oh the unknown rich people islands yeah like he he's let the name slip i don't remember what he had said but then he was like oh oh i didn't say that is that where uh jeff bezos is yes (laughs) yeah it's actually he's in outer space right now all right our first question is a voicemail question you can send yours in 302-464-TFFB you can also go to the website thefantasyfootballers.com click the submit a question button and send us your question here we go. What's up, ballers? This is Paul from Chicago. Big fan of the show. I want to know, from a fantasy perspective, what are some of your guys' favorite landing spots for the free agent wide receivers this offseason? Thanks, guys. Keep up the great work. Okay. I mean, it's a good question. There are teams that kind of jump out as great potential opportunities, and that goes beyond free agents. That goes to some of the top-tier wide receivers that could be drafted and what opportunities that they will have. Mike, uh, I'll let you start here. Is there a team or two that you think, yes, let's go there? I mean, number one, it's nice because, look, if that dynasty pass that we were talking about, Andy broke down team opportunity, all of those things are 
carefully laid out there, and we are taking into account uh, on those lists, looking at restricted free agents. You know, it, if someone leaves, then what does the opportunity look like at that place? Uh, but but my favorite landing spot right now. Uh, it's it's probably the Packers because I just believe like Aaron Rodgers is is so excellent and you have Devontae Adams and they need the number two guy. I still honestly I still believe like Lazard can be that number two who's good enough for the Packers to keep going, but I believe that they could upgrade and then you could have another another great fantasy option well, at the wide receiver position. We have plenty of history where Aaron Rodgers was yes. able to sustain two quality wide receivers, three, three. quality wide receivers. If, if he's got a good player that's getting open, he'll get him the ball. Um, the two teams that stick out to me uh, don't quite have the same level of quarterback, but I think the opportunity is greater. That would be the Detroit Lions, who sure. say what we want about Jared Goff. He's not. A world beater, but he's also not. He's not the worst. He's not the worst. He's not just a, an. In, say what. Say what you will about Jared Goff, but listen, he's not the worst. Yeah. Introducing. Listen, there's somebody worse than him there, out there. Yeah, he's not the thirty second best. He's at least in the top thirty. Um, but <laughs> why is it so much easier to downgrade players when they're on Detroit? Oh, uh, history. A history of losing is probably ah. the number one reason. Ah, um, history. But with Galladay and Marvin Jones, both free agents that aren't necessarily expected to return, there's a bunch of targets available. So that's one spot. And the Raiders oh. are the other one to me. They desperately need a legitimate wide receiver option. Do you think they will really bail on rugs and brian edwards that quickly i think they will and should bail on brian edwards and the way that i've seen henry rugs from the moment he was drafted from before the draft is he's not a he's not a possession volume guy he's not a guy you're going to give 130 plus targets to ever he is a tool a weapon to be used and i think his utilization is opened up if they go and sign uh, an Allen robinson bring him in and all of a sudden now the defense has to key in on these guys and you've got lightning speed on the outside that can go deep and stretch the field so um I don't think that would be bailing on Henry Ruggs I think that would be accentuating what he does well my favorite destination is Tampa Bay sure because of presuming the that Chris Godwin correct if, if Godwin leaves um I think that there's just such a huge opportunity there and the offense you know the ball's going down the field Brady can uh you know he's got another year I think or more so I think Tampa Bay is a great opportunity. It's and hard because a lot of these destinations are the situation that, you know, it's like I, I get excited about the Raiders, but then I think about Ruggs and I think about Darren Waller and I think about quarterback tumult and I think about their running, uh, you know, wanting to run the football and I don't know how much I trust it. The thing about the Bucks, if Chris Godwin does leave, I, what do you guys put the, the your percentage odds right now that Chris Godwin does leave Tampa Bay? 85%. Ooh. Okay, so you're going – Way up. I, I would put it more like 50%. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm around the 50% mark. But the nice thing to me when, when I'm thinking about the Bucks, you have Bruce Arians coming back, not a lot uh, left in the gas tank as, as far as coaching. Tom Brady, yes, he's he seems to be infinite now, but the, the clock will th run out on Tom Brady. They're not going to just sit around. If Chris Godwin leaves – they they're going to add somebody else and say we're going to maximize this window that we have. Well, what's ironic is there are two wide receiver free agents here, Antonio Brown and Chris Godwin. If either of them resign and one of them doesn't, it's yeah. really good news for fans. Yeah, and I'm, I'm looking at Tyler Johnson there too because I think he really flashed and Brady likes him. So if if they were to leave and not do a lot in free agency, like that, they're a team that could end up, you know being a Marvin Jones destination sure. to me. Like and that could be very interesting touchdown wise. By the way, we have free agency shows coming out in March, so we'll be talking through a lot of these things. Instagram question from uh Cupcake Craig. Oh, Craig loves those cupcakes. Man <laughs> after man. Who, who hates <laughs> cupcakes though, you know? Uh, Nobody. They've grown on me. They've grown on me. A piece of cake or a cupcake? Oh man. Piece of cake. That is a piece of great question. <laughs> Why? Um, because you you get you get more moisture. You know when you get the edges, but you don't get the top. Well, the top, yeah, I still you, get the top. No, but you don't. <laughs> no, that you like, like. I'm not cutting the sideways piece of cake from the bottom. 
I guess I'm thinking more of a muffin. Well, I think cupcakes tend to take more liberty with volume of frosting on the top. That's versus true. Versus the pe- well, no, cake has. A, I mean, there's a lot. Of- I mean, I might even have frosting in the middle. I never seen frosting in the middle of my cupcake. That's true. Although You've, you have swayed we, me, Jason. We need to. Uh, here's the question: In a single keeper redraft <laughs> league, which Jason, Jason had five more minutes of material. <laughs> I did, but I have one important at least. <laughs> okay, all uh, right. You know, look, the Foot Clan. We care about it's them. The, it's the off season. Go for and it. And a pro tip: If you are eating a cupcake, is you take the top off of the cupcake. You rip the little muffin top off, okay. including the frosting. Yeah, I know where you're going. Flip it upside down, mm. and you got yourself a delicious sandwich where the frosting is so much easier to eat, and you can thank me later. Uh, it's in the middle, then. That's that where solves it is. a lot of mustache problems. Exactly. You so you really give a lot of thought to the mustache with the cupcake. What well, have you ever taken a bite of a cupcake with a mustache? <laughs> yeah, I have. Yeah, you, then you've had a lot of frosting in your <laughs> yes. mustache. In that's, a single a keeper wash. redraft league, which running back would you keep on your squad? Joe Mixon, Antonio Gibson. David Montgomery. Oh, man. Single keeper, redraft league, Mixon, Gibson, Montgomery. Ooh. I will um, – this is a tough question. I will go Joe Mixon. Yeah, this feels like a pro-Joe uh, episode because I think when I look at these three guys, a, a single keeper league is a redraft. That You, you don't, you don't right. look at this with age of Gibson over Mix. If this was dynasty, maybe I would lean that direction. Um, and there's too many question marks with David Montgomery and no quarterback situation. So right now, I'd say Joe Mixon. I'm with you. Okay. I'm I'm going Gibson. I'm going to go with Antonio Gibson. I'm going to go uh, – Gibson has not scratched the surface of what he can become. So it, it is a little bit of uh, going with – I think he with, scratched it. Hasn't he scratched that surface? I, yeah. Uh, may, maybe like – like when he finishes like a, the, the running finger, back two, a, seven, eight, But six. he's doing all that without pass catching. That's what I mean. Where they, like it, sh- This is a fingertip scratch. This is not a nail scratch. So maybe a rub, a gentle rub and caress at what Antonio <laughs> of the Gibson. Yes, of the surface of what Gibson could mm. become if, if they do work him into the passing game. And Joe, I am I am very concerned about Joe Burrow. Uh, I, I think Joe Burrow might. It'd be a, a pop list candidate type of person. You're more means, confident in that quarterback in Washington. Yeah. Did you see Taylor Heineke play that playoff game? I was just waiting to find out who it was. New two year deal. Better performance against the the Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oh no. Taylor Heineke. Don't do it. Or Patrick Mahomes. Don't uh, do it. Patrick Mahomes, not in the Super Bowl, but in like week twelve when he dominated. In the playoffs. Oh, okay. That's not us. We would never we would never bring something <laughs> like that up. All right, before we get to the next question, want to thank today's sponsors. First, Leaf. As we all know, trying a, a different wine is one of the best ways to find new favorites, but it's also one of the worst things to do because I have no idea which wine to pick. That's I true. haven't heard of this, and so, You're I, so stupid. I, I, try, I try I try a new wine, and it's like, oh, this, this is terrible. I don't want to drink this. Well, the nice thing with First Leaf is that they send personalized selections from top vineyards around the world right to your door, Every bottle is handpicked by experts, not by you, not by me that don't necessarily know what we're doing. I was stupid again. But with our preferences in mind, I signed up. I went through the process, told them what I like, what I don't like. This and then, is apple juice. Yeah, this is, and then the nice thing is every single time you get a new shipment, you've rated the bottles. You've you know said what you like and don't like over time. And each time they get better and better and better. And look, they work directly with world-class winemakers, saving you up to 60% off retail on award-winning wine. Discover new wine like a VIP by becoming a First Leaf member like me. Join today, and you'll get six bottles of wine for $29.95 and free shipping. Just go to tryfirstleaf.com slash footballers. That's six bottles of wine for $29.95 and free shipping at tryfirstleaf.com slash footballers. <sighs> There's no way I could ever pick a wine out myself. I can act like I'm picking one. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's a certain way that you can pretend. You stand there and you look all fancy. You pick <laughs> it up and you got to put that one back. Whatever yeah. you pick up, you put it back. No. You wear, no. A, you wear a tux to pick it out at the local. You know, place. just a tie. <laughs> all right. Twitter question from uh, Tomas. He says, do you think Cortland Sutton belongs in the list of top five wide receivers to trade for in Dynasty Leagues? I've seen... One video that included him and one that did not. Uh, I heard a good friend of the show, J.J. Zacharyson, talking about Cortland Sutton, and he highlighted that 
in startup, uh, the startup ADP from Dynasty League Football, that Cortland Sutton was wide receiver 15 last year. He has dropped all the way to wide receiver 25 or 26. So they just like the public perception of Cortland Sutton and his his role, his security as a like he's not even a top 24 wide receiver. And Cortland Sutton is a dominant player. A dominant player. Yeah, remember when we were talking about stinky sandwiches? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know yeah. where you're going. Yeah, yeah. There, there's uh there's a first, you know, piece of the bad bread, and that was the drafting of Jerry Judy. And then there was the like other side of it, which was like injury slash future at the quarterback position. Yeah, the Drew Locke is the issue to me here because while when 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 he was drafted at the beginning of last year, you had a hope. We all didn't know for sure what we had in Drew Locke. And there was potential that Drew Locke becomes something relevant, something that can really lift up Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton, Noah Fant, and, and take an offense to another level. I think what 2020 showed us is that that's not Drew Locke. He is not going to develop into that. I would be shocked, blown away if that ever happened. Um, you have turned on him tremendously. I have because – You have I, saw, You are done with him. You are D-U-N. Yeah, you're, you're I, like I know all I need to know. Yeah, and I mean, he's he's not it. The five game sample size at the end of his first year was not enough. Uh, there was some good, there was some bad, but including the entirety of last year, I, I think there's enough to you're know. You're more responsible than Drew Lock. I am far more responsible, and I'm not a responsible person, but I am far more responsible. Over than Drew under Locke. four snooze button presses per morning. Uh, under for me, over for Drew Locke. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Okay. But my point is, uh, I don't see him. He's an unrestricted free agent after this season. So there's there's question marks on. He may be one before the season. Uh, th- there's question marks on whether or not he will be there, what his future is. I don't love wide receivers changing teams necessarily. I don't see that as, oh, good. Next year he can go sign with someone have a better quarterback. So I do not view Cortland Sutton as a top five. Oh, you trade said Cortland target. Sutton's a free agent? Yeah. And yes. then I made a joke about Drew Locke. So that was pretty <laughs> stupid of me. I thought you were saying Locke was. All right, follow-up question from last episode. This one's from William. Uh, he finished the Tight End Truth episode. Didn't hear us talk about Big Irv. Mm. Uh, wanted our input as to what we think of his future next year from a redraft and dynasty perspective. Big Irv Smith of the Minnesota Vikings. Big Irv Smith is very interesting. Uh, we You still need some things to happen, though. Kyle Rudolph is technically under contract for the Vikings next year. He feels like a potential cap casualty type of a player, and which would open up a huge amount of opportunity for Irv Smith. And he, the problem with Irv, though, is I mean maybe you get a, an outlier season of it just – all the touchdowns go to Big Irv, and you're and he's sitting at nine or ten by the end of the of the year, and you're like, sweet, I have the tight end four or the tight end three, but with Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen on a run first team, and, and I mean Dalvin Cook is of course in, involved in the passing game, it's the ceiling for Irv. He Irv's not going to jump into being a top two dynasty or a dynasty player in his current situation, so. He's he is capped like that, but he uh, he's interesting to me as someone who is a lower tier guy. You can maybe trade for. Uh, it, it won't take that many of assets from your team to get him if you're struggling at the tight end position. Yeah, if you're hoping for the third year tight end breakout, that's the year that tight ends usually take that big jump. It's bigger of junior Noah Fant and uh, Hockley's are your options. But I, I agree with what you're laying out here. The at best he's third in the pecking order, and that's if Rudolph is gone. Which puts him at the bottom of my, of those three players you just yes, mentioned. Yes, agreed. All right, Instagram question from Shannon Fisher. Hey, ballers, what's your prediction for Mike Williams for 2021? I am worried I will never get to see what Mike Williams could be yeah. because Mike Williams plays football in a way that is dangerous. He jumps too high, which means he falls too far, and he does it every play. And he gets hurt. He's a great player. He's excellent. But he feels like a part-time player. Yeah, it really I, – I, I hope – because I have the exact same thought, and I hope that that is just recency bias of this 
you know, rookie Justin Herbert year and the injury riddled season that Mike Williams had this season. Um, because the reality is he's a, he's a very good wide receiver. And if he can stop doing the thing where he falls from 20 feet in the air straight to the ground and hurts himself, I do think he has, you know, the, the skill set, the ability and the quarterback to take a step forward and be a really good option. He will be someone that I will be targeting at the very end of the draft. Cause I don't, I don't think he's going high. I think he's a double digit type player. He's going to be a borderline undrafted. Well, exactly. And so when you're at that point in the draft and you're looking at, uh, these these flyer options, Mike Williams could be nothing next year, but he has the talent, the quarterback, where if everything clicks, the fantasy could be you know huge. Well, and it, I feel like we spent forever talking him up at the end of last year. It's like, this could be a week where he has a mm -hmm. great week. And it was like he was getting 81% of snaps, 82% of snaps, 84% of snaps, finishing with three catches, four catches, four catches, no touchdowns. You know, like there just really wasn't, much there last year and this was two years ago he was double digit touchdown guy is he the i think he might be on the way out you know he, he you can look at his, his his career this is his fifth year yeah like mike Williams has been in the league for a long Five time years of height i mean i know the first year it was that year was gone to uh to injury but it's 2021 jason i'll i'll throw this to you is he on your list for the 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 Devontae parker the Corey davis these guys that have just basically been not doing much for fantasy football, and then they're like, "Oh, hey, yeah, this player is good." In year five, um, well, I mean, we we have we've seen him. You know, he had a top twenty four season yes. his sophomore year, so I don't think it would be quite the same. And I don't think he has the ability to leapfrog and become the number one unless Keenan Allen has a catastrophic, you know, season ender. Uh, so no, I season I, vacation, vacation. <laughs> season vacation. Um, so I don't put Mike Williams quite to that list of of breakout this this coming season. Uh, Nelson Aguilar, or Mike Williams, Mike Williams. Why? Because I think well, he that, has a team. First off, right, and if I, I think that the Raiders bring in a prominent wide receiver, I think that's their number one goal right now. All right, uh, Trevor McCarthy from Twitter. What item in the studio would be the most dangerous weapon in a battle royale among you three? I I call um, I call this. Okay, Andy call is this, reaching uh, for a, oh. a microphone trophy that's pretty. Good. Oh, this thing's really heavy. Uh, it, Academy of Podcasters People's Choice Award 2016. It is very Jason. heavy. Th I, that's I, I feel take like you it's out. a uh, unwieldy. I mean, d a direct oh, wheel. Uh, it's wieldy, Mike. A direct blow to the back of the head is going to work. I is mean, it sturdy enough that? Oh, oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. You yeah. You don't even you don't even need to hit him with this. You just punch holding it, <laughs> and it, your punch is a, is <laughs> super. Your strength. fingers will break into a thousand pieces if you do that. Uh, look, I'm taking the custom helmet, okay? Because okay. I've got defense. I've Are got you, offense. You're gonna go wear. Head I can wear this sucker, and mm -hmm. I know concussions are. You know, you're not gonna knock me out real easily, okay. and then. And then I could take this thing off. Okay, Miles Garrett and Miles Garrett. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now do we still have that? What? Mike's looking around I'm desperately a, for a weapon because he's about to lose yeah. a fight. Now I don't see the the Japanese gate that we had made originally. That's out front. That's not in the studio mm, anymore. All right, all right. that would have been a good one. Oh Mike. man! Mike. Oh, what are we oh, talking no, about? No, the, the footy, footy award. The footy award. That is that thing is dangerous. It is sharp on nearly every single side mm. of the trophy. Okay, and you'll have the honor of being taken out by a footy award yeah that's I mean, true if you're gonna go out you'll yeah. probably just give up there's a chance if you're wielding that i would volunteer yeah, to be hit as yeah. tribute all right um let's go to another twitter question from jordan keep alvin Kamara for a late first or kyler murray for a late seventh i would take alvin Kamara. Some of this is going to be determined based on the quarterback situation. I now presume this is also single quarterback, right? Because it otherwise, not, it's clearly yeah, Kyler. yeah, it's yep. single. But let me let me change the question then, because is there any way I would be able to, like, if it's just Kyler Murray for f free, or yeah, Alvin Kamara for a late first? Would I, that change it? I think it would. The, the seventh is is pretty late. The, the reality is, like, there's going to be, like, for instance, Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts will be a, a later round guy that I'll be all in on for fantasy. <laughs> there it is. Jalen Hurts so good. Oh, man, I thought we were getting kissed again. 
That's what it felt like because it was. Com- I'm I'm on edge over here yeah. with those sound drops. It uh, feels like there's a really really large gap in what you're expecting to get between getting Kyler Murray, who was the number one quarterback for a large part of the season, and what might be with Jalen Hurts. So like, I just hypothetically, Hurts in his three starts, had the third most points at the quarterback position. I yes, that doesn't matter to me very much. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I I I, I think that the cost. You know, we we looked at Lamar Jackson's breakout year and Pat Mahomes' breakout year, and the differences between those and even Kyler's this past season is that Kyler's was expected, and he was going in the fifth round. Whereas you got Lamar Jackson so late, you got Patrick Mahomes so late. I'm looking for someone that you can hopefully get so late, and maybe the fantasy community. What about Kyler Murray in the seventh? <laughs> well, that but the, <laughs> wouldn't is that, that be really getting that like, late? Yes, that's really late. If I could take Kyler Murray in the seventh. You get Kyler Murray and you get Saquon. You get Kyler Murray and you get. You're not getting Saquon. Okay, you get Kyler Murray and Nick Chubb. Versus. Versus Alvin Alvin Kamara and hoping for Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts. Quarterback of your choice. I mean, because you get to draft them. You don't get Josh Allen. You don't get Kyler Murray. Let's just take those two because obviously there is the caveat here. And I'm just exploring. You don't know that you're going to get Jalen Hurts. But let's change this question and say, would you rather have Nick Chubb and Jalen Hurts? Or I'm sorry, Nick Chubb and Kyler Murray. Yes. Or Alvin Kamara and Jalen Hurts. Yes. I would take Alvin Kamara and Jalen Hurts. I would take the Kamara side. Which side are you on? Uh, I'm on the Kyler side. So hopefully we have explained some thought process here for you, and, and you can make I think your own what we got out of that was that you guys are both confident in Jalen Hurts, maybe more than even Philadelphia is. Yeah. Or there, there's no or guarantees. This, or Samesies, because they're, the, all the rumors of their trade in Carson Wentz. Yeah, but, uh, but obviously they could draft a quarterback. Obviously, if Wentz is there, then I won't have the same <laughs> expectation. Well, no, I, I'm not expecting that. I'm expecting it to be Hurts based on the news. Where does Terry McLaurin stand among other wide receivers? Uh, this question comes in from Instagram. Hmm. In skill set or fantasy? I would say fantasy. I think that's that is kind of what, what we do. Yeah. Well, it was it was not clarified? Well, I would just use that as the default. All like right, the barometer. The bar- like when in doubt, it's for the fantasy show that you're <laughs> yeah. on right now. <laughs> yeah, that's a good that's a good rule of thumb. All right, uh, Terry McLaurin or Allen Robinson. I guess that one's yeah, sort give, of impossible. Give us one where we Mike know. Mike Evans. Oh, Mike Evans. I'll take Mike Evans. Adam Thielen. Redraft single season, I would take Next Adam year. Thielen. Oh, man. That one's very close. I think I might take Terry there. Julio. Julio. Single season Julio. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I see Terry McLaurin as a – Top 20? So I, the words that were about to come out of my mouth were a low-end wide receiver two. So I feel like it's more like 20 to 24. Um, I don't think I see him as a top 20 until the quarterback situation changes, which could happen this year. Where do you guys stand with Corey Davis from Big Fresh on Instagram? Uh, he, look, he showed that he can play in the NFL, and that's great. He's going to be a free agent, and so we have to wait and see where he's going to land. Um, if Corey Davis were to go to the Green Bay Packers and he's the wide receiver, that makes more sense. Mm-hmm. I know there's a lot of buzz about Juju because he posted the uh, picture of himself on Fortnite in the Green Bay Packers. Oh, is that what happened? Yes, he was I playing. Thought, I thought Al Borland was the only sole proprietor of, of this hype. No, I think Juju wants to go there. But notoriously, historically, the Packers have not paid up for wide receivers and free agency. And I think Corey Davis is the type where maybe they can get him for – more on a budget, but would you be in on Corey Davis if he, if he was the wide receiver two for the Green Bay Packers? Yes. If he was the two, yeah. Is Lazard a free agent? He is. Yeah, I believe he is an exclusive rights free agent. I can vet that, though. Which means he would I be on the be, I mean, being in on Corey Davis probably doesn't mean much more than being in on him now in that situation. Who's going to score more touchdowns? Devontae Adams or Corey Davis? D- uh, hmm. <laughs> This, that's the that's, that's the leader question. Well, Just answer really okay, fast. Okay, Devontae Adams. Uh, Robert Tunyon or Corey Davis? Robert Tunyon. Yeah, so yeah. it's kind of tough. Tough in that. I mean, I know everybody wants people to go to Green Bay, but we've been doing this for so many years now, yeah. trying to find the next 
Jordy, James Jones, combo. Lazard. Lazard is an exclusive rights free agent. So which he's is, a Packer. He's a Packer. Who's a better this? actual wide receiver? Juju Corey Davis. or Corey Davis? Oh. Since Mike wants to talk real football. I apologize for wanting no, to talk I, football you know, on I the football talk show. Talk football? <laughs> this guy. The, the gumption. Um, <laughs> he's a pistol. I think I would take Juju. Nah, man. Yeah, I would take Juju too. But and for your Green Bay discussion, Robert Tunyon is a restricted free agent. So Green Bay's got to figure out some stuff. That means he can sign with another team, but he can't he can't leave his room. <laughs> right. There's a couple <laughs> restrictions on what he can do. He's got an ankle monitor. It's <laughs> it's it's not nice. All right. Uh this question cracks me up just reading it because I feel like I can step into your shoes, Mr. Ryan Stern, with this question and know how you're feeling. Not because I'm experiencing it, but because I've experienced it with other players. Is there a landing spot for Lev Bell that would give his dynasty value a boost? <laughs> oh, you're waiting for us to save your bacon right now. You want us to give you the magic, oh, no. a magic word of how mm. Le Lev Bell, uh, Lev Bell's done, guys. Yeah, there is. So he, the answer to your question is absolutely not when it comes to fantasy production, but maybe when it comes to being able to unload him for something. And that means if he signs anywhere. If, if he gets any contract. If he gets a contract with any team at any point in time, he is on the block and you move him for and we the be third clear. round pick. It, it, maybe you, you ask for that second. You, oh, you, you ask and you're not going to get it. But then you accept the third. And I want to be clear. When he signs with the Argonauts, you need to just say, Lev Bell signed, and then go try to trade him. Yeah, I'll accept a fourth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's coming from somebody who knows that they have an asset that is expiring. Mm -hmm. um, duh. Expiring, <laughs> duh. <laughs> Instagram question from Sawyer Van Twerp. What do you think Austin Eckler's ceiling is? Very, very short, I imagine. Oh. Oh, it's oh. a short guy joke. Oh. Oh, great friend of the show, Austin Eckler. You're going to do him dirty like that? We love you, Austin. We but, do. But you're not super tall. That is also true. However, he can <laughs> he jump. Could, he could fight the three of us. And he would, oh, yeah. If, oh, he, money if I could choose Austin him Eckler. as a weapon for that battle royale, I would choose Austin Eckler. The three of us? Yes. If we brought in both producers, <laughs> uh, both programmers, you got our customer service guy, and we flew in Kyle Borgo Borgognoni Borgo to do... The, <laughs> I mean, we could have the whole team here, and I would not choose the field. I would choose. I'd put the helmet on, that's for sure. Austin, and you would still lose. <laughs> I'll take the table. How are we feeling about Austin Eckler right now? We didn't get to see a lot of him last year, and, you know, this is Justin Herbert's team now. I still feel great about Eckler. He, he, he sh he's a great player. He is in an excellent opportunity where he's he, he's got the money. And they know what his skill set is. He has already been unlocked. So, I mean, the ceiling for Eckler is a top five running back. I don't think he's top five. You uh, don't think he can hit top five? You I, don't think I, that's in his ceiling? I don't think that that is in his ceiling. But I what do, was he two years ago? Well, I'm saying for this version of the team for 2021 uh, with Justin Herbert's world with a better improved defense that's not super injured. Um, I I I think he is a solid safe, high floor running back, especially with the passing volume that he gets. I'm looking at his game logs and his fantasy finishes when he had Justin Herbert, and he was very consistent. He never had terrible games, never busted, but listen to the fantasy finishes. Running back 8, running back 27, running back 9, running back 29, running back 17, running back 18. Every week he's good. Yeah, that's great. He, exactly, but that's not a top 5 type of back. That's not a that's not a back. If you do that, no, every Jason's single right week, about Jason's when, right about that. When you're talking about a top five and you're talking about the guys, who he's not are, an RB one for your team. I I with think those numbers. I think a low end RB one is 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 okay there. But when you look at the top five guys who finish at running backs, they're they're constantly almost every week top ten finishers. Phil uh, is gone, Mike. Phil is. Oh, I he's, know. P River is I, I dried up, it's drained. I mean, yeah. I understand, but Justin likes to throw it downfield. Yeah, but I mean, you. I, don't, I don't, that's no disrespect to Austin Eckler. He's going to be a good player, but I thought I think we really did see the 
fantasy maximization of Austin Eckler with Phillip Rivers. I mean, here as a comparison, the running back five from this last season was Aaron Jones, and his fantasy finishes are 12, 1, 13, 8, 15. You know, they're, they're all, you know, a heavier green in our on, on our website than the back-and-forth teens finish. But you do have consistency. You do have a floor. You're never going to have a bad game from someone who can catch the ball if you're down and be a part of the reason why you're up. I, I'm going to give you a chance. Do, anything else to add, or are you good? No. All right. Uh, what's your least – This is. we're going to end it with this one. Uh, Twitter question from uh, nobody. That's their name. Oh. Okay. What's your least favorite of the nicknames that you three have ever developed – for players on the show oh well, that's easy is it uh turok the no no you're what? gonna go with the best name ever. Tariq, go, Tariq go, the darnell dinosaur. anderson go with darnell anderson oh you've always hated that because it is is an embarrassment to the man he's uh, better than that to the man darnell or the <laughs> yeah if, if you don't know darnell anderson is the nickname for <laughs> daryl henderson it is just another man's name <laughs> Which I see your it's point. It's embarrassing. It's conf it is confusing, and then we start using it, and I don't know what his name is anymore. I just want him drafted. That's Mike. Mike, Jason, I just want Darnell Anderson drafted. <laughs> Anderson I, is better than this. I people. can tell you that that mine has become like I actually loved the nickname when we made it. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about smooches. <laughs> J.D. McKissick, say, you're, you've just brought it on. I know, but what I don't like about J.D. McKissick's new nickname is and the we're all attacks? waiting for it here we're just we're i think that's why we're not getting yeah it. i know because <laughs> oh there it is <laughs> there it was uh that drop has made me not want to bring up his name it's a little scary his new name is he who shall I not thought be you named used to really hate Tariq the dinosaur hunter. oh turok it was it was bad <laughs> turok the dinosaur hunter but uh, I, th I think the listeners were okay with it some of them which were. is really the peak of any yeah. nickname be okay with it just keep listening all right, that is it for the Fantasy Footballers Podcast today, the real February 11th. We'll catch you next week. Goodbye. Take care. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.